EBMT brings together clinicians, nurses, scientists and transplantation professionals from all over the world, focused on innovation, research and the advancement of HSCT and cellular therapy. Now, as the 48th annual meeting and the third virtual edition gets started, we're here to bring you the highlights on EBMT TV. Welcome to day three here at the 48th annual meeting of the EBMT. Today sees the presentation of EBMT's prestigious awards given to individuals for their outstanding contribution to the field. It's the Presidential Symposium. On the show today, we'll speak to the Van Beckham and Basic Science Award winners about their winning abstracts, hear from the top clinical abstracts authors, and take a look at the pioneering work carried out by organisations around the world, from Germany to China. First then to this year's Van Beckham Award winner, Dr Jeremy Abramson. The 2022 Van Beckham Award winner, Dr Jeremy Abramson, joins us now. Dr Abramson, you won the award for a new study looking to the use of lisocaptogene marilu cell or liso cell. How extensive was the study? The TRANSFORM study is a randomized international phase 3 trial comparing lysocabdogene marilusal to standard of care as second-line therapy in patients with relapsed or refractory large B-cell lymphoma. Eligible patients had to be considered transplant eligible and have primary refractory disease or large B-cell lymphoma which relapsed within one year of initial treatment. 184 patients were randomized to either Liza cell or standard of care. And at this EBMT meeting, we are presenting our pre-specified interim analysis of the TRANSFORM trial. What were the main findings and what does this mean for treatment? Our study clearly demonstrated superior efficacy of Liza cell over the standard of care. We met our primary endpoint of superior event-free survival with a stratified hazard ratio of 0.349. Liza cell also improved overall and complete response rates, progression-free survival, and had a trend in favor of overall survival. We believe these are practice-changing data, demonstrating that Liza cell should be preferred to the historic standard of care as second-line treatment for patients with early relapsed or refractory large B-cell lymphomas. And finally, what does winning this award mean to you? I'm extremely grateful to the EBMT for recognizing our work with the high honor of the Van Beckham Award. I share this honor equally with all of my hardworking co-investigators and also want to recognize all of the patients and families who participated in this important study seeking to cure more patients with relapsed or refractory large B-cell lymphoma. The true honor really belongs to them. Joining us now in the studio is this year's Basic Science Award winner, Sasha Gottert. Sasha, why is it important to understand the effect of type 1 interferon inducing metabolites in GVHD? So by now, several studies have shown that the activation of type 1 interference is protective in mouse models of GVHD. Still many things remain unknown, for example, how and which endogenous signals can trigger type 1 interferon response, or how the timing of interferon activation is affecting its beneficial effects. One important interferon-inducing pathway is the DNA spending sting pathway. We hypothesized the microbiome is a known modulator of overall outcome after allergic or, more specifically, its mediators, the microbial metabolite, to play an important role as activator of this pathway. We seek to identify protective type 1 interferon inducing metabolites and investigate um, the involved pathways to set a basis for beneficial modulation of the microbiome in the future. What impact did you see and, and what does this mean for the prevention of GVHD? We hope to design specific microbial consortia that can be transferred into the patient to prevent GVHD but also foster beneficial responses like GVA. We hope that these consortia might be also beneficial in other settings like cancer immunotherapy, for example, CAR T cells. And we are currently already working with a company to design these consortia. And finally, what does winning this award mean to you? 
So first I want to thank the committee for choosing my abstract. For me it's a great honor and a great personal recognition of my hard work of the last years. And I hope that we additionally motivate both me and our really great team to translate our findings into the clinic. Really exciting work there from the two award winners. Now, the top five to six clinical abstracts will also be presented at the Presidential Symposium. Let's meet two of them and find out more about their studies. Hello from Gliwice, Poland. The study I'm going to talk about is entitled Post-Transplant Cercophosphamide versus Antithymoside Globulin in patients with ALL treated in first complete remission with alloHCT from matched annulated donors. A study on behalf of the Kimiokin party of the EBMT. The use of ATG as part of conditioning is a standard of care for patients undergoing hematopoietic cell transplantation from matched annulated donors. However, in recent years, post-transplant cyclophosphamide has become more and more popular alternative. In our study, for the first time, we retrospectively compared these two appro approaches in adult patients with ALL in first complete remission. In a univariate analysis, the use of PTSI was associated with reduced risk of relapse without impact on non-relapse mortality, while in a multivariate model, it was associated with improved leukemia-free survival. Therefore, our findings suggest that PTSI should be preferentially used in adults with ALL treated with HCT from 10 out of 10 matched unrelated donors. Hello from Houston, Texas. My name is Faye Amo. I'm a graduate student at Baylor College of Medicine. The title of my abstract is Engineering T-cells to prevent GVHD and leukemia relapse following allogeneic stem cell transplantation. In this study, we developed therapeutic T-cells that selectively eliminate activated ox 40 positive alloreactive T-cells and can therefore suppress GVHD. We further engineered these T-cells to co-express an additional tumor targeting receptor and the resulting T-cell product offered robust protection against both GVHD and leukemia relapse, two major post-transplant complications. We are really honored that our work is selected as one of the best abstracts and we want to thank EBMT organizers for this great opportunity to share our findings and establish collaborations with the international transplantation community. Now let's go to Germany to visit the Department of Pediatric Oncology and Hematology at Justice Liebig University, Gießen. One of the department's specialities is diagnosis and treatment of children and adolescents with Hodgkin lymphoma. We are seeing here about 90 patients per year with new diagnosis with a large portfolio of cellular therapies, hematopoietic stem cell transplantations and immune therapies, we have a great variety to render individualized and personalized treatments for the best care of our patients. We here in Gießen have a very strong focus on Hodgkin's disease. And I love that we can address um, this disease on various levels from basic research to clinical trials. I really like the exciting multidisciplinary network, for instance, with our rheumatologist, our gastroenterologist and pulmonologist. We really work as a team for the patient. Additionally, we offer a broad psychological and social support for our patients in order to reach the best for the families. Heading to China now. The Suchow University's haematology program has integrated basic and translational research with clinical care and talent training, advancing its progress as a world-class centre in the field. We 
We are honored to be recognized as the National Clinical Research Center for Hematological Disease, which is certified by our national government, representing the top three clinical centers of hematology in China. We have 616 beds in total, perform more than 1,000 transplants each year, and in addition, hundreds of cases with cellular therapies such as CAR-T. As the president of Chinese Society of Hematology, we are dedicated to conduct innovative clinical studies for creating novel drugs and products to finally improve the prognosis of patients with hematological diseases. We have extensive cooperation with many international organizations, including EBMT, Well, that's it from us here for Monday at the meeting, but there's still lots more to come. Tomorrow we hear from EBMT President Nicholas Kroger, speak to this year's John Van Rood Award winner. Do make sure to stop by. <laughs>